First off, I wanna say thanks for anyone who has watched my videos and hit that subscribe button. It's crazy that the channel just hit 100,000 subscribers. I'll definitely be doing a video on my journey once I get the official plaque from YouTube. But back to this tablet comparison. It's a little early, but I think it's safe to say the Galaxy Tab S9 is gonna be one of my favorite tablets. But if you're leaning towards getting an iPad, you can actually save money by going with this iPad 10th generation. So let's see how it compares to the new Galaxy Tab S9. <laughs> The price difference between these two is one big advantage for the iPad. We're talking only $450 versus $799 for the Tab S9, so almost half the price for the iPad. The downside for the iPad 10 is it only starts with 64 gigabytes of storage versus 128 for the Galaxy Tab, but currently there's still a free upgrade at 256, depending on where you get it. You can also go up to 256 gigabytes for the iPad at $599 which is still quite a bit cheaper than the Galaxy Tab. You can also use a micro SD card to expand the storage on the Galaxy Tab where you don't have that option on the iPad. Display sizes for these two tablets is going to be very similar. 10.9 inch LCD display with 1640 by 2360 resolution for the iPad versus 11 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display on the Galaxy Tab with 1600 by 2560 resolution. You'll also notice the iPad is a little bit wider or more square versus widescreen on the Galaxy Tab. Display quality is somewhat subjective here or personal preference, but to me the screen looks a little better on the Galaxy Tab. It's got darker blacks, better contrast, has a little better viewing angles, and appears to be just a little bit brighter than the iPad. You've also got 120 hertz refresh rate for the Galaxy Tab versus only 60 hertz on the iPad, but not everyone is going to notice the difference. To me I feel like the iPad is still fairly smooth, even only at 60 hertz. But having said that, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. I did notice on the Tab S9, it's got a little more bluish tint to it compared to the iPad. I also like the fingerprint scanner that's built right into the screen on the Galaxy Tab versus on the power button for the iPad. It's really a nice option to have on both tablets though. Once you use a tablet with the fingerprint scanner, it's kind of tough to go back to using one without. The iPad is a little bit lighter as well at 498 grams for the Galaxy Tab versus only about 476 for the iPad. Now one big advantage for the Galaxy Tab is gonna be the battery life. After running the same battery drain test on each, the iPad lasted about five and a half hours before dying completely at 100% screen brightness versus about nine hours for the Galaxy Tab. So yeah, if you want the tablet with a better battery life, you'll wanna go with the Galaxy Tab. And then software wise, the iPad is currently on iPadOS 17.1 versus Android 13 on the Galaxy Tab. This is another category that may come down to personal preference, sort of a toss up to me. There are some things I like about iPadOS and some things I like about Samsung's One UI software. It is nice though that you get the S Pen included with the Galaxy Tab where you have to pay extra for the Apple Pencil. But with the price difference, I don't think that's gonna be an issue for most people. Either way, it's nice to be able to draw, take notes, or just move around the software. I do prefer the S Pen slightly better than the Apple Pencil. And you'll notice you can only use the Apple Pencil in certain areas where there's really no restrictions on the S Pen with the Galaxy Tab. It's also kind of strange how you charge the Apple Pencil with the iPad 10 versus just snapping it right onto the back for the Galaxy Tab. When it comes to performance, the iPad comes with the A14 Bionic chip versus the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in the Galaxy Tab. I know Geekbench scores are not everything when it comes to performance, but this might be one of the few times where Samsung beats the iPad in single core and multi-core scores, as you can see here. Although the iPad does beat the Galaxy Tab in GPU performance by quite a bit. Both tablets feel nice and snappy, just moving around the software. It should have plenty of power for just about anything you would need to do on both tablets. If you're wanting to do some gaming on your tablet, these two are actually pretty good options in my opinion. They'll play most popular games like PUBG Mobile and Asphalt 9 without any issues. I feel like some games will look better on the iPad, possibly because of the better GPU performance, or that some games are better optimized on iPads, but you can't go wrong with either one. It may just come down to personal preference when it comes to which is better at gaming.
Now the speakers on these are pretty good on both tablets. You've got one on each side of the iPad, even though it looks like it has two on each side. But the Galaxy Tab has a quad speaker setup that's been improved over the previous Tab S8 and is quite a bit louder when compared to the iPad. Here's a quick sample of each just to give you an idea of what they sound like. But yeah, if you want the better speakers, I would go with Samsung. Now when it comes to cameras, they're not always going to be the best on tablets. Usually you can get better results just using your cell phone, but the photo and video quality on these two are actually pretty good, probably better than average. You've got a 12 megapixel wide angle lens on the back of the iPad, 13 megapixel wide angle on the Galaxy Tab, then a 12 megapixel ultra wide front facing camera on both tablets. Weird thing is you can only shoot 4K 30 frames per second for video recording on the Galaxy Tab versus 4K 60 frames per second on the iPad. Here's a quick sample of each just to give you an idea of what to expect from both. So as you can see, there's several things to consider between these two tablets, but surprisingly, I feel like it's a lot closer than you would think. Considering the price difference, I could see a lot of people leaning towards the iPad just because of the price, and it's got a lot of good features, plus good performance. But if you're interested in more tablet and phone comparisons, I've got quite a few more that I'm working on, so you'll wanna look out for those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.